fans of the films. I didn't even realize how many there were. Like, there's there's ones I'm just like now discovering. I didn't even know. Have you seen and um, stuff. I haven't seen too many. I've only but, seen. But yeah, go every ahead. Manson movie because if they ever play his music, every movie and it's really weird. I don't know why they always play Mechanical Man. This song, Mechanical Man, and it, all of these movies. It's, I don't know why it, that one in particular. Is there some weird copyright? I have no idea because um, the one you would think they would play is like "Look at Your Game Girl." I don't think any of these. I think that's very play. deliberate. I think they're yeah. trying. They're picking like the least commercial Manson song to like. It's a it's a lot easier narrative to swallow for audiences to be like, yeah, he was a hippie weirdo and his songs were bad. That's why they didn't sign him. It's like, yeah, no, he didn't have yeah, songs. Mechanical Man is the most like experimental yeah. out there song on the layout. He had it's germs the most out of, there. He had germs of good pop songs, but like they never really germinated into more mainstream material just because he was just kind of an uncooperative person. Yeah, the and studios, and I am, and all these movies do it. Um, I am really sick of. And everybody agrees with me that I actually have listened to his music, sat down. I'm really tired of the narrative, like, oh, his music is so bad. It's like, mm-hmm. no, it's not. It's actually really good. And second, it's like, I, I guess a lot of people also, like, his music's, like, you know, comparative to, um, I mean, you could argue who's better or whatever, but, like, it's no different than, like, Daniel Johnston or... A lot yeah, of it's outsiders. like an outsider yeah. folk kind of thing. And that's just kind of not conducive to what the Beach Boys production style was. So those sessions just didn't work out for that reason. And there was also just probably because I think the story goes is that like, you know, they just weren't sitting still in the studio. You know, they were like a free form kind of they knew no structure, basically. So they couldn't cooperate, even just with like microphones and stuff like that. And like, and if just compare cease to exist to the beach boys never learn not to love it's worlds away it was so like different from manson's vision that it like caused major like almost violent threats towards dennis wilson's yeah. person and like so yeah that would have never worked out even without the cult killing things it could and like this is kind of i think where i my kind of knowledge is kind of uh interesting because like um, just because I know a lot of like of just deep Beach Boys like collaborative projects, because uh, just they were like working with so many weird people. There are a lot of people in the Beach Boys scene, especially at that time. They have like like a really low paper trail and like like presence online, and it's just really weird people that just Brian Wilson and Carl and Dennis were just turning up with, making recordings with. And then those recordings would be in the vault and they would come out like 40 years later on a box set. And mm-hmm. like, you'd look, you'd like, you'd search for the, pre- there's like songs on Beach Boys box sets that are like credited to people that like literally nobody knows who they are sometimes. And like, mm-hmm. if Charles Manson hadn't, uh, if the cult hadn't done what it done, uh, they would have literally just been like guys like uh, Ron Alt, oh, no, not Ron Altbach. He was actually like a professional musician. People like, I'm blanking on names right now, but oh, guys like, God, fuck, I'm on so much coffee right now. Um, uh, yeah, just like uh, David Sandler, and if you just like listen to the, like the Feel Flows box sets and the Say Along box sets, it's all on streaming. There's a lot of like deep, like experimental tracks that like Brian Wilson and Dennis Wilson were doing with people that just never come to fruition. And the Charles Manson stuff could have easily just been done that same way in fact on a recent box set there's a dennis wilson song called you know i know and some people and it has like this really kind of plunkily dunkily played acoustic guitar strumming and dennis wilson kind of crooning and it might be very likely that that's actually charlie playing the acoustic well yeah guitar. there's a lot of um i know that a lot of some of the uh beach boys box set things that have came out recently uh there's um some songs that either people think or actually uh, confirm that uh, Charlie's on it. Some of the demos and tapes and stuff that he's in the background and stuff playing. Mm -hmm. I don't know which ones in particular, but um, Mm -hmm. I know that I've heard that before. Uh, 
and some you do hear think, like you do hear some people think of chatter that kind of give away yeah, stuff like that and some people think too that it um it was also it's kind of uh like accidental where uh whoever is dealing with the masters is there they probably have no idea that he's even on it so they just kind of like um just put it out you know there's just, they, mm-hmm. they just have no idea so and it probably wasn't even like that written point, down or anything like there's and at that no... point they were they were in mm-hmm. brian wilson's home studio mm-hmm. so they were probably they weren't keeping union session sheets they were just working no. off and on the clock whenever uh marilyn and the kids wilson and phillips were trying to sleep whenever they were awake they would record music <laughs> Well, how, even a little... well, how? Well, even the whole or how uh, the Beach Boys uh, took uh, ceased to exist is because uh, Charlie didn't like ever like sign contracts or anything. He didn't believe. Yeah, in, like, it was a handshake. Contract. It was literally He's like, a it's, handshake. Yeah, it's it's all sale. I got. With you got my word. You got my word. That's all you need. It's my word, and yeah, he just wanted also, a motorcycle, and they just gave him a motor. Is... He just wanted a motorcycle. I, I think that's what it was. That's all he wanted out of the even the without deal. the motorcycle, he could have <laughs> just kind of backdated months and months of just him living on his house and just kind of sucking him dry. Yeah. I just I just love that. Like no consciousness. You just have my word. <laughs> that's all that. oh, man. I'm I hate like just like the biopic industrial complex, but it would be kind of interesting to do like a full Dennis Wilson unauthorized just scumbag biopic yes. because like love the guy love his music but the guy was just a total creep he banged his underage second cousin just yeah. to get back at mike i love. just found out about that i didn't even know about that <laughs> oh man that's i think that's in summer dreams they, yeah, they showed yes. a of, what's the name yeah. of that actor that he was in like American Crime Story, where he's like, "This is the worst thing that happened to me since I found out I had cancer." Thank you, Ryan Murphy. Brilliant screenwriting. But yeah, he's like, "How old are you? Where are you?" They even like set. They see that really early in the movie with the. Uh, it's like, "Hey, Mike Love, are you or are you not Sean's da- father?" And that Homer Simpson looking Mike Love's like, "I don't want to hear you talking about that." <laughs> um is it true that in real life that mike love like pretends that's not his daughter yeah well um he needed a kidney transplant and mike love was like the only like living relative with like the same blood type uh-huh. and he was like no daughter of mine does drugs and i think she died yeah without that kidney transplant so yeah fuck you mike love <laughs> My asshole <God>. that there's <laughs> the new beach boys documentary coming out on disney plus the documentary is really just called the beach boys and i think that's going to be mike K- 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 loves uh mike kkk loves just propaganda <laughs> piece because there's a brian yeah. wilson doc a couple years ago which in itself was propaganda for whatever ghoulish managers are keeping him on the road just right. forever even though he's so old it's just He's, he's got dementia now too. His wife's dead. Just mm. let him retire. Oh yeah. my god, it's so sad. I saw him in 2018. The band was great. Al Jardine was great. Bonnie Chaplin was great. But Brian was catatonic, and I really felt bad for like, I don't know. I felt a little bad for participating, but at the same time, it was a great show. It was the they did the Beach Boys Christmas album. It was just a great mm. wintry experience. They had the whole, yeah. and I bought like the whole package too. So like I went. To like the sound check, which was nice. So this is like a private little rehearsal and everything like that. It was great. Right. They even played some uh, unreleased Beach Boys Christmas songs from the mid seventies, some like rare yeah. deep cut stuff. Right. Um, yeah, Summer Dreams. They also portray. This is one of the things I like because the um, Love and Mercy that only really focuses on Pet Sounds, some mm-hmm. of Smile, and then the eighties. None of the seventies stuff. Uh, American Family kind of just cuts off. There's a really funny letterbox for you. I saw that movie. It's like, I love how this movie um, basically shows the 15 big ones period as the happy ending to the Beach Boys. Just them doing like the nostalgia, like state fair circuit. It just like cuts off on the mid 70s. 
and while they're singing fun 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 with their shaggy beards it's just like bruce johnston wrote i write the songs sold a billion copies mike love is a transcendental meditation teacher dennis wilson drowned in 1982 <laughs> yeah and it's a brian wilson had some controversial therapy he doesn't have it anymore he's touring now al jardine quit the beach boys in the 90s carl wilson died of lung cancer in the late 90s Slabber, slabber, slabber. Um, but no, the summer dreams does go all the way up to Dennis Wilson's death. So we do get the great 1980 uh, cocaine sessions, also known as the cheeseburger set or the hamburger sessions, where Dennis Wilson and Brian were just doing coke and eating cheeseburgers while Brian was supposed to be dieting and exercising with Judy and Landy. Um, Dennis Wilson was another just like scumbag Denny freaking notch on the tally board just being like a total enabler to uh, Brian well I don't think Carl was doing this any either he was really boozing it up and hitting the smack to mm -hmm. the kids of Murray Wilson you know that's gotta fuck you up a lot <laughs> Carl Wilson was probably like the one who held it together the most but I think he joined a cult in the 80s it's not actually talked about he was also uh, touched by the uh peripheries of cults but this was more of just like a just like your bog standard money cult like negative uh, orgones and stuff like that like right. the love happy cult just one of those like mormon protestant kind of weird things yeah um summer days uh i didn't actually I, I it's not great it's not good really but it's not the worst i didn't think it, i didn't think it was the worst thing ever um uh i saw in letterbox that people were like rated like extremely low i was expecting the worst thing ever and then i ended up not like hating it or anything it was just kind of a i was like a beach boy super fan it is one of just like my favorite things to watch clips of and there's a great um series called uh, endless syncopation it's like this weird kind of mde adam curtis style montage project that just takes beach boys i've posted some of them on my instagram like joe piscopo and mike love and stuff like that it's just these like constantly like looping clips uh it's also kind of, it's kind of everything is terrible style they're just like constantly playing oh, clips okay. of just weird beach boys ephemera and it's just edited right. in a really funny way and that's really enjoyable. And a lot of them lean heavily on clips from these really shitty uh, TV movie biopics. Like Murray Wilson dying of a heart attack. And Brian Wilson would be like, my dad died? My dad died? My dad died? <laughs> yeah, there's a great clip. That, uh, there's one called, uh, there's one that's just dedicated to Rubber Soul influencing Sgt. Pepper. And there's just tons of clips of, uh, I kind of mentioned the scene before with uh, the Van Dyke Parks, Samuel, uh, Anthony Rapp, fake character, where Brian Wilson is being like, have you heard? They play him as like, once he gets into doing pot and LSD, they just play him as a stereotypical hippie. He was like, you heard Rubber Soul, man? Just like blows my mind, dude. And his manager's like, Brian, nobody's saying you gotta be like the Beatles. <laughs> but I wanna make something like the Beatles. Summer Jeans has a similar scene where they're doing yeah. God only knows. I love like, that. Edit, oh, uh, this summer. will never sell records. Dennis is the back of like, this is the greatest song ever written. I like just like Dennis is just there in the movie to just like, like look at the camera and be like, hey man, it's kind of fucked up what's happening to the Beach Boys right now. Yo, Murray, I ain't with this shit. I'm gonna go fuck bitches. Yeah, I, know. I love too that the movie the whole movie like the timeline uh you know what timeline it, they're in because it's like the most stereotypical like generic like fucking uh, where it's like oh uh we know they're in the, the late 60s now because it's you hear the music like, Do -do 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 -do. and then they all like are smoking pot they're hippies mm -hmm. and they're like whoa man far out man and then then uh they're watching Jimi hendrix on tv it's like oh so i know it's the 60s because uh the beast boys they missed monterey pop i don't <laughs> like yeah the beach boys did miss monterey pop i don't think they were playing monterey pop on tv i don't think they did film it but like 
and it's like on the Criterion, but like I don't think the beats they were like streaming it live on TV and the Beach Boys were watching like, man, we missed Monterey Pop. Right. Yeah. It, uh yeah, I just yeah, I just thought Summer Days was uh very good movie. The They did all uh, portray man. Mike Love and Dennis throwing hands, which happened a lot and um Mike Love hired uh, his brother, or Mike Love had his brother, uh, Stan Love, the NBA player, just in like the touring entourage as like a semi manager, road manager, bodyguard. They had this other guy named Rocky Pamplin, who was like a Playgirl model, semi disc. He was like a kind of Dirk Diggler type, but also just like a rough guy who was also fucking Marilyn's, uh, Brian Wilson's wife at the time. And I think it was like, there's actually, uh, I think there's like some interview clip that kind of um, might actually infer that this was like Brian knew and this was like arranged because there's a clip of Brian Wilson talking about being doing no fat uh, when he was looking for special creative option uh, outlets. He said he did no fat during semen retention. Sounds. Yeah, he did semen retention with like the sperms <laughs> going up the spine. He said he did no fat for pet sounds and he did no fat for the Love You album. The the really good outsider album he did with the Moog synthesizers in 1977. That is a great album. And uh, there's an interview clip of Brian Wilson talking about no fat and it's it's ill in. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and the clip he says like, uh, my wife and I understand, and we have an arrangement, and it kind of fits in the timeline with Rocky Pamplin being in the scene. So I think this Rocky Pamplin guy was just fucking Marilyn was totally. This was just like a well, thing, you know. They, yeah, it was something they was, had. It was the late '60s. I and mean, even was, this is like, the late '70s at this point. This is like fat. Oh, late '70s, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's still it's, this, mm-hmm. that stuff was the still cocaine at the burgers. Time. Yeah, that's still swinging '70s. The key yeah, party 60s, shit. Late sixties and seventies, like the, the swinger thing was like cocky. Sixties swingers was... was very like hairy and oily, and then there's like seventies mm-hmm. swingers, which is very like it's like it's a much more clean kind of swinger key party thing. It's a bit more like you know mayonnaise potato salad key parties, um, on like the shag carpet. A lot more kind of cleaner cut, a little less sticky and wet but and that's yeah. kind of what they were doing that that dry thumping disco beat where 60s yeah because... it's all like whoosh, 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 whoosh. but then the 70s was like and i think that's kind of what the sex was like back then if that yeah, makes even, sense <laughs> even since we're on the other you know, topic of that time period the beach boys or not just the beach boys but even like everybody out of hollywood at that time, uh, even the Manson family, everybody fucked each other. There was no, mm. nobody cared about monogamy. There was, everybody's had sex. Nobody cared what, how old anybody was, how, what mm-hmm. gender anybody was. Everybody just fucked each other. <laughs> I think Nick Mullen brought up a great point at the time that the uh, Epstein was arrested that like, I think a lot of that culture came out of 60s culture where um Mm -hmm. they were doing that sort of amorous free love stuff Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of that did end up just being like ways that hippies would just exploit women i I imagine a lot of that free love stuff was just straight up rape like people talk about woodstock 99 oh yeah being raped i can't imagine how much rape was going on at like fucking woodstock especially all out and shit like that yeah yeah and well here's the thing like there's always been throughout history psyops like that. Like free love is a mm-hmm. psyop because it's just an excuse to um, Romans did it, Greeks did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and like free love, you know, it's just like uh, you know, ex- yeah, excuse to explain. And they'll do it out stuff. in the future, like in the siege orgies of Arrakis. Yeah, it's like nowadays the modern psyop now is the whole like, uh, uh, uh the, the whole like you know the. The, Pussy manosphere, and bio. the manosphere like how the 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 muslim arrangement not necessarily that they're muslim but they do they there's guys that are preaching the thing right now where it's like you can have multiple, wife, multiple wives but they can't fuck mm-hmm. anybody else it's like it's like it's yeah. a 
it's actually a traditional beautiful thing but really it's just Adam it's, 22 it's just, does that really yeah really it's just it's just uh manipulate it's just exploiting them and they it's all it's all a psyop you know and mm-hmm. they but they try to make an excuse that oh no it's actually a uh it's a beautiful thing like oh they don't get to have they're loyal to their man but their man sleeps with other women <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> mm-hmm. and yeah this kind of ties into um this just kind of ties into what we might talk about a little later when we talk about night of the hunter but like it was literally not until like the late seventies that we even talk literally had like the words child abuse in the public lexicon. Like it literally took thousands of years to even like I de- like to give like remote personhood to children. They were literally just like people that you would pop out to work on your farm, and then if they lived through it, then they got to be their own people and just yeah and then they got to like wash their dad's nut sack when he was like 80 <laughs> they just go uh, they just continue working on the farm but yeah like literally like the concept that like sexual abuse would happen in homes is like that's some is that some something that like people should be arrested for instead of just like uh we'll just not talk about it maybe yeah. if you just don't talk about it she'll forget and grandpa won't do it again it was literally not until like the late 70s that we were even able to comprehend what people were doing to each other it was just right fucked up shit. yeah um yeah that was a, a common thing back then uh well not not the uh what you were saying about how yeah like the child like he uh you know they they worked on this farm for like ever and like they fucking you know there was no like child labor laws and stuff and then they when they became an adult is when they left and uh yeah because my uh uh my step grandfather my dad's stepdad i think he was like that he grew up like he just like worked on a he just pretty much grew up working on a farm and like i don't think he even really saw like much of you know, he probably lived in like a little, like small, like rural town, but like he didn't really know the world or anything. And I think it's like when he was like an adult, probably younger than an adult, maybe like 16, 17 is when like left. And like that was just a normal thing back then. And mm-hmm. uh, it's just kind of a, uh, that's why we kind of have to take for granted how uh, we live. But, um, uh, but the abuse thing, yeah. Uh, and that's also the tie with, uh, the Manson stuff is that uh, it is interesting because you were talking about the late seventies, like pol- the Polanski uh, rape. That was that was probably like, I'm trying to think that might be like one of the first, if not the first, like big public like uh, like rape yeah, celebrity rape trials. Yeah, celebrity, yeah. I can't think of earlier examples. I can yeah. I can think of earlier examples of like you know like um, uh, like you know people later being like hey maybe natalie wood's husband killed her uh like i think like what kirk douglas molested natalie wood or something stuff like that stuff that people talk about later but like first actual public in the news at the time was probably the polanski trial yeah that's a good point yeah i I can't think of an earlier example really Mm -hmm. uh yeah, that was a thing back then. I mean, even uh There was like, like Jerry Lee Lewis getting canceled for people finding out he married his underage cousin. Well that wasn't like a public litigation thing, but that was uh that was like a major like, oh my god. Yeah. Right. Which but, led to Elvis doing like literally the kind of the same thing with Priscilla Presley, but he did it smooth and like covertly. Yeah. Um yeah. and like you know it was really degenerate and gross was and obviously he's actually a huge part of the manson slash polanski lore uh who's not brought up that that much is uh hugh hefner uh hugh ah. hefner the playboy mansion in the seven the play uh hugh hefner in the 70s even on after that was fucking vile i mean like uh that's the thing too. Roland Polanski hung around Hugh Hefner a lot, and uh, there's no way in hell 
even though there has been women that have came out and stuff, but there's no way in hell that the 1977 rape was the only time he did that. There is no way in hell that was his first time doing that. No. <laughs> and and uh yeah, Brooke Shields when people she was who a do kid, fucked up shit like that don't just do it once. Yeah. And if they and did Brooke it once, Shields, it's like escalating behavior up to that, you know. Yeah, and Brooke Shields when she was a kid hung out at the Boomer's mansion. She's yeah. even like posed in one of the issues. Yeah, Br- like Brooke Shields and Tracy Lords, those are like some high profile examples of just, yeah. just straight up publishing child pornography in like mainstream magazines. Yeah. And uh I don't know if she was uh she wasn't like uh Nothing was published of her, but another celebrity that was exploited like that was like uh, Drew Barrymore. She was a kid. I mean, she mm-hmm. was you know hanging out at LA nightclubs when she was eleven years old. Yeah, she was like she hang out getting the, high at like thirteen years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And LA, that's the thing. Like that's what's kind of funny that the Me Too thing is a thing now mm-hmm. because this stuff has been going on forever and. Uh, they're they're all like uh but before you know now they're all like oh like we got to protect the women but you know there's what okay. like fucking 80 years of this shit going on and nobody said anything and you and know if you brought it up I people do. are like oh it's just la oh it's it's just mm-hmm. a different life it's it's different uh and uh yeah speaking now of, it's um, kind of t- speaking of 80s child actors i really got a bone to pick with the whole um short round case um Taekwon, I feel really bad. I don't actually, I keep forgetting his name. I'm forgetting a lot of names in this stream. It's not just him, I'm, I swear to God. But um, the short round guy, like his cute little Oscar redemption thing. Um, like, yeah, I, I, it sucks that he wasn't able to get roles. It really sucks that like there were a lot of Asian stereotypes in Hollywood. But they treat the fact that like he did a couple child actor roles and then didn't go on to be a star as like this huge tragedy even though he, he got to direct episodes of TV shows, he still got to be in the film business. Like, mm-hmm. his peers, like, got so much, like, worse end of the stick. Like, mm-hmm. Jonathan Brandis, Corey Feldman, um, the girl from Poltergeist, the girl from mm-hmm. um, Land Before Time, kids getting murdered, molested, um, just completely, yeah. like, used and abused and dumped and murdered. Uh, um like just spit out of the disgusting Hollywood machine and digested by abuse. Um, all that happens. And this guy comparatively gets off pretty well. And then like Hollywood gets to give themselves a pat on the back by redeeming themselves by then just like giving him an Oscar and being like, we're sorry we didn't give you the keys to the kingdom and just make you an instant film star nobody talks about the never-ending story kid not becoming famous what's the tragedy there do you remember half of the actors from uh the little rascals movie that had donald trump in it they didn't do anything the kid who played alfalfa became like a hardcore like like duck dynasty style catholic like uh (laughs) no like a dugger style catholic who has like like the cudgel literally like it's he's literally like uh like a child rearing like robert mitchum knight breeder sorry knight of a hunter style just bible thumping weirdo <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, i think he yeah. got molested too so yeah, <laughs> yeah got, what's so, weird is all those all the yeah, children short round get and now short round gets to like go to all the award shows and be like Hi, I'm so happy to be here. And everyone's just like, oh, isn't it cute? He's here. And he's like, he's a full grown man. Like, I'm not even mad at him. I'm just mad at like every like, and it's good for him that he got that Oscar. And I don't really care about him as an actor. I don't care for short round. I don't care for Goonies. I didn't care for everything all at once. Sorry to just like go on this complete rant, but I was like thinking about this for like the past few weeks, just since like uh, um the Oscars happened and like apparently Robert Downey Jr. forgot to shake his hand and people were like, oh, how dare they? And there's like seven people on stage. 
Earn Jimmy Kimmel was <laughs> like making fun of our DJ's uh, drug addiction, past drug addiction, whatever. <laughs> he couldn't that? make fun of the black. Yeah, he couldn't make fun of our DJ's blackface because there's Jimmy Kimmel blackface. So he yeah. had to figure, figure something else. It's yeah, and it our DJ should have gone on stage lame. like, "Thank you, Jimmy Kimmel, and thank you to uh, your dead son who got me that Oscar." <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, like if you notice, I know we're kind of on a tangent about this, but sp- if you notice about all like the 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 eighties Spielberg productions, um, all the child actors in that always got either molested or died in the most wild mm-hmm. ways. Not just yeah. oh, the and short round oh, got out easy. Like the girl from um, the girl from Poltergeist, she died of like some like really tor- ter- terrible disease but like apparently there were blind items that said that like it could have been conspir- a result of, like, there's a brutal there's rape. conspiracy there's uh you, there's dark uh there's like a, there's like that. a brutal rape on the set of jeopardy that's what i remember them talking about ages ago yeah. with nick mullen yeah it was on one and of those like come town compilations it's like nick mullen also the uh the, what the, the twilight the zone movie. movie the twilight yep. zone movie. jonathan lynn Again, yeah. back to Night at the Hunter, I was watching a clip of, it was just like a VH1 clip of like the scariest movies of all time. And one of them was Night of the Hunter. And you've got, you know, Leonard Maltin, uh, Jonathan Brandis, uh, uh, Wes Craven, Robert England being, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is great. One of them is Jonathan Lannis. And I think that's a ringing endorsement because who knows better about murdering children than fucking Jonathan Landis. <laughs> and uh that murder was only the second worst thing he ever created uh the first thing is bitch of the sun max <laughs> um I I, i'm not gonna say shitty superman fan fiction i'm not gonna say yeah, who it was so bad. i'm not gonna say who it was because he's a nice guy i'm not gonna say who it was somebody that was on my youtube channel a long time ago I'm not gonna say who it was nice guy I have respect for him. Uh, he told me a story about uh, John John Landis being a fan of his work, and I didn't say anything. But in my head, I was I was thinking, uh, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever John Landis is brought up, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Fuck the eighties. Not really, well, I but... I was gonna say too, like, um, obviously dark stuff in the world still happens. We have a lot of things that, you know, messed up things that happen. But for some reason, I don't know what it is, but the '80s and '90s are both very dark decades. Like, not just because the because the violent... kids from the '60s grew up and brought their sensibilities into the corporate world not just about not just the violence but i don't know why not just the violence but there's always like a really like that time gap is like really like dark like mm-hmm. there's this kind of a gloomy like dark vibe and uh, um he hit me it felt like a kiss adam curtis that like a huge the heart of that documentary and the kind of bleakness of just how it's like ever since like the 60s onward down <coughs> we've just been like on yeah. a downward trend and there's like i was saying there's still dark stuff that happens but um for some reason the 80s and 90s like uh like there's some reason like a lot of like especially if you look at like crime